Let's talk about Anson Mount clarifying message to old school fans about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. When I saw this headline, I'm not going to lie, um, a part of me died a little bit. And even if it was just the headline and nothing else, it's it's just a bummer that it looks like someone's telling Anson Mount, yo, 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 you need to, you know, stop trying to promote the show to the old fans. We're pushing for the new fans. And so he's, he's making clarifications and like, why would you even that's do that? Kurtzman's camp, yeah. <laughs> right. So what they said, last week Paramount sent out a video message from Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Anson Mount announcing the completion of the final pickup shots for the first season and thanking fans for making the series happen. But in a new interview, Mount is clarifying another men- message he sent out fans in July. In July, as they were about to start shooting the season fin- one finale, Ma- Mount tweeted, Old school fans are going to be very excited to see what we're trying to pull off with this one. In a new interview with Sci-Fi promoting his role, whatever, the actor was asked about what the July tweet meant regarding the series and Mount clarified he wasn't actually talking about Strange New Worlds in general. (laughs) God. What he said was, well, I think that tweet was a little misinterpreted. I was talking about one episode, episode 10 specifically. But I do think the spirit of the show is in the title. We're going back to the big idea of the week, new planet, blah, blah, blah. So it looks like the same thing. It's still going to be like big idea of the week, new planet. But I think it, I feel it's very, it's frustrating. You know, it's frustrating that he has to backpedal on like one of the few things that was really holding on to about this show. Because I like him as a captain a lot. And I, when he was saying it's like old Star Trek and the, the Freak of the Week, and now he's like, oh, it's just it's about that one episode. Uh, episode 10. You know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's an oddball. That is strange. Right? Um, so look, it says, reading between the lines sounds like there'll be something special about the season one finale that will interest old school fans. Yeah, I can't see the chat, so I have no idea what anybody's saying. But hello, chat. Um, No, like, I... Ah. Uh, <sighs> Here's the thing I know, and again, everybody take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt because this is just going off of things that I've heard, right? So these are pure rumors, whatever. Um, Some of it has been kind of uh, discussed myself and Robert Meyer Burnett on things that he knows and other things like that. So those kind of things I wouldn't say were necessarily confirmed, but he backed some of what I was saying up to a point, or at least that he could anyway. But otherwise, the rest of it is stuff I cannot confirm at this time but i will say this back when this show was first announced you have to go what almost two years back now right um initially akiva goldsman was brought in during the early parts of uh discovery and in an interview he said when i was brought on discovery i thought it was going to be a true prequel to the original series i was expecting you know captain pike and you know young spock and all this business And he's like, where the hell's Kirk? You know, all this stuff. And, uh, you know, that point he was informed that no, no, this is not that show. So Akiva had this goal of getting this show, Strange New Worlds, made from the moment he signed on to start working on Star Trek. Ah. Now, fast forward a little bit, and we have had, you know, all the stuff that we've reported on over at Midnight's Edge go on, and whether or not that was accurate or not, let's just for a moment move past that because it doesn't really matter too much until you get to the point of when things got remerged uh which happened in the midst of all this business right right and what that remerger did was then um kind of reinforce star trek back to the way it was to a point or so it was supposed to well it was like, i mean like as far as the rights are concerned right yeah so like paramount and cbs now we're controlling it not just cbs yes right. and in that uh there was an also another article that came out where uh, Emma Watts, who was now the new president of Paramount had made some comments about Star Trek. And also at the same time, Kurtzman who has been overseeing that Clarice show that got canceled, got raked over the coals for it. So what I had heard was they had in their original contract for bad, uh, I keep calling it trying to call it bad robot, but it's not (laughs) a secret hideout secret hideout. Right was a five show deal for i believe it was for five years and it was actually a pretty low level deal for kurtzman and that's why i kept telling people this he signed on to do this star trek shit is basically like a 
a favor to CBS because people, even though we, we see JJ Abrams and Kurtzman in certain lights, they don't see him the same way we do in Hollywood. Like, right. So to them, he was doing them a favor kind of thing. But anyway, so Kiva was kind of buttoning in and, and trying to get this strange new world show made, but Kurtzman had his plan. He wanted section 31 to come in after all these other shows we have besides this, remember the uh, prodigy and mm -hmm. uh, Picard and stuff like that. So if you do the number in your head, that's five shows. Well, from what I heard, and again, please take this all with a grain of salt, is that Akiva kind of worked. Akiva worked his magic behind the scenes to get Strange New Worlds greenlit underneath Kurtzman's nose, oh. and that and got in the way of Section Thirty One because they couldn't have another show in production at the same time. Oh. So I guess they had a bit of a falling out behind the scenes. And if you remember, there was a point where Akiva Goldsman took over production on Picard. Right. And we had heard at that same time that Kurtzman got pissed and left, but that also corresponds with the time he might've been working on uh, Clarice as well. Right. So the two things, the event, they, they could be correlated. They could not be correlated, but then Kurtzman came back and all of a sudden he gets this brand new deal. And now basically from, we don't know the ins and outs of this deal, but it appears now that he has more options and more shows that he can get rolling. Cause now all of a sudden section 31's back on the table and it seems like maybe, and just maybe, uh, Strange New Worlds was kind of yanked away from Akiva Goldsman and Kurtzman got in there and messed with it quite a bit. So maybe that's where these comments are coming from. Yeah. So my, from what I'm gathering is the original idea for Strange New Worlds was what Anson Mount said in that initial tweet, and what Akiva Goldsman was trying to do, and that was make an old school Star Trek show. Right. And I think Kurtzman came in and said, now, wait a minute, we got to do this and we got to have this and this and this and this and this and that. And yeah, now all the, of a sudden it's, it's going to be strange new world starring number one and Pike and Spock, not strange new world star starring Pike. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. And in, in episode, uh, uh, episode two, uh, um, Pike is going to be, uh, lost in a transporter accident for the next eight episodes. And, uh, are you kidding me? Number one's gonna have to take over. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm completely joking. No, number, you're probably right though. Watch. Yeah, number one's gonna have to take over for like the majority <laughs> of the season as acting captain, and then finally he comes back in the last episode when they save him. <laughs> well, this is and this is another rumor. I have no idea if this is true or not. So, we'll, again, please take this as a grain of salt till the show comes out. This could be true, and it could even change. But from what I heard, you know how the shows normally are bookended by the captain's logs, right? Right. And even though, um. Michael Burnham wasn't the captain until whatever the last season here of Star Trek. The it last was her. episode, right? Yeah, she was the one who got the wraparounds when it came to Discovery. From what I'm hearing, and this is, could be true, it could be just a complete BS. From what I'm hearing, the person who gets the wraparounds in Strange New Worlds is number one. Oh, it's no. not Pike, yes. That's what I'm hearing, is that the show is going to be more from her point of view. Yes, that's what I've been hearing. Well, that would be infuriating. I would... Oh man, they are gonna get so wrecked on online if that happens. Oh man, and I love that he's using the term pickup because let's let me let me I guarantee you these are reshoots, not pickups, right? <laughs> right, the history of Star Trek, I they're 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 reshoots, right? Well, and I'm that, sorry for Star Trek fans who enjoy the new stuff, I, I get you, you know, but uh, I have not been a fan of anything they've been able to pull out yet. And what they did to Picard to me is just un unexcusable. So or inexcusable, I guess would be word. No, yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. If you, if you like new Star Trek, then what you know, art is subjective. Enjoy it. Um, there are parts of the of new Star Treks, uh, the new Star Trek, both Discovery and Picard, that I've liked. There are episodes of Discovery I actually liked from seasons two. Seasons two, pretty much. Um, and parts of Picard I liked, but there are, are large parts that I really disliked and I felt were just like disrespectful of the franchise. So it's, it's, it's hard to get behind. I'm praying that strange new worlds is amazing. Yeah. Or at the very least, um, um, uh, a return to old form, you know, not per, not entirely, but like just a little bit, just move a little bit that way, please. But well, I think the other, yeah, I think that's the other problem that people have as a misconception with older fans is we don't want the same shit over right. and over again right like and i mean there was even a bit of like oh i don't know when the next generation came out for those who are old enough to remember but 
you know, a lot of us warmed up to it before long. You know, it just takes some time sometimes to get used to something new. But next generation wasn't as a far cry from TOS as we're getting now from Discovery compared to all the other Star Trek before. Right. At least all the other Star Trek felt like it came from the same universe. This feels like a completely different franchise altogether. Right. It felt like even when the show was drastically in the future, it felt like this took place in the same uh, timeline. Right. And everything we're seeing now, it's almost like some like what if bizarro version of of that timeline. I mean, it's almost like. It's like it's it's like it's the mirror universe every time we watch it. It's crazy. Well, and that's another thing, too, is like, yeah, it, it goes along with the whole 25 percent different and the Kelvin timeline BS and what they consider actual prime, you know, because there was a clear separation at one point. And, you know, it, it, it's not a coincidence that the only time certain things were seen in the JJ movies were from the movies and not the TV show. And, yeah, now they can mix things on discovery and stuff so then their only big excuse now is they're only doing it because they want to and or because they can get profit off it if they change it because right. that still goes back to the whole thing we kept trying to tell people before was the whole 25 percent different thing outside of a few minimal things that had to be different because of legal reasons and that's it a lot of that stuff was by choice right like and it had to boil down to they couldn't make like a tribble and 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 bad robot make money off it they had to have it be different than the triple we saw in the original series yeah, so it had teeth or something what was that exactly about? <laughs> so that's the whole thing is like and that's what it all boiled down to it had nothing to them wanting to do something cool or unique it just had to do with we have to make it that much different so we can make a profit off of the merchandising otherwise cbs gets it all yeah. like and that's that's kind of the situation here i believe too yeah i think it's very similar if you fleece your fans you can't you can't break the skin yeah. You know, um, it's okay to, you know, revisit old ideas as long as it, as it's, as there's new, there's something new to it. As long as you put your whole heart into it and that you're trying to tell a good story. Um, you know, once you break the skin, you know, Hey, you now, now you've lost a fan potentially. And that's what they well, do. And the beauty is, is we already have a prime example of this shit from years ago. And it is in the star Trek universe. It was into darkness, right? you have the perfect argument to be made as to why you cannot cater to a new audience and try to keep the old fans on board at the same time. It's just not going to work. You have to find a way to just make sure that it's good period, because right. then the new fans will come, right? Like that's just how it works because with into darkness, the only movie that that movie was made for nobody, because if you're a new fan, you have no idea who Khan is and you have no fr fr frame of reference and you have zero reason to give a crap that he's there in the movie. And if you do know who Khan is and you are a classic fan, then all it's going to do is irritate you because it's not the way it's supposed to be. And everything you're doing is wrong. And it's like, there's nobody who thought it was a good idea. Like, it's it's a double edged sword you should not play with, right? Like, it, it's so insulting to the fans to sit there and try and pretend that they that you know better than them, right? Like, that's, right. I I don't understand how these directors can be so, and writers and and all that kind of stuff and producers can be so you know blind to this fact. But I do know at the same time it's because they all smell their own farts, right? And they all tell each other what they you know. Oh. want to hear and it's never anybody else's fault and they're hanging out in their little or twitter their own fault it's everybody yeah exactly yeah, they're hanging out in the little twitter group they blocked anybody that has a critical uh, opinion and they're all just sitting in this little echo chamber stroking each other off and talking about how great they are well, going how... back to ghostbusters it was easy to say oh that failed because you know trump supporters didn't go see it you know yeah. what's that's the logic these people go off of right like it's no nobody went to see that damn movie yeah like, it was bad <laughs> hey, what, what what did that what did two to a ghostbusters 2006 have to do with trump what that nothing only reason it did is because the director and other people had to go out there and make it about that right like that of course that's a prime example of what we're dealing with here and it's the same thing with star trek right it was the moment they made it all about the virtue signaling right and i you, I believe you were at that same convention, if I'm not mistaken, where I was two years ago, where you had Wilson Cruz, somebody I just recently had yep. a run in with on Twitter. Yep. He was out there on the doctor's panel talking about how progressive, and this is the first this, and this is the first that. And then Peter Billingsley goes, hold up, stop. He played Dr. Fox. He's like, now, wait a minute. We had my character who actually um, was married to many different uh, sexes. And then you had this character and that character. So he got shut down pretty quick. It's like, that's the other problem we keep saying is with Star Trek is like, 
you're not breaking new ground here. You're not doing anything that has ever been done before. Yeah. And the best that you can do with Star Trek is just try to keep it what made Star Trek good to begin with. The other stuff will come, right? Like right. that was the beauty of TNG is TNG didn't start off with a bunch of preachy episodes. It didn't right. start off with a bunch of episodes based on this or that or the other. In fact, I'm trying to think, I think the first major one I kind of remember was like the, when we get to like the data episode with measure of a man. And that was what season two. Yes. Yeah. Before, so like, yeah. That was, that was pre beard, I believe. Yeah. So like you get to the point where like, it's probably in, in a little bit into the show before TNG started tackling some more social issues. Well, even like, then though, it didn't beat you over the head. Like, okay. For instance, Dr. Exactly. Flo Dr. Flox was, um, you know, what, what's the word? Um, uh, he had multiple mates. Some were men, some were female, whatever. He was he was as progressive as it gets, but he was also not a flamboyant caricature of that sexuality. Exactly. But, but yeah. then bounce, you know, jump forward to discovery, boom, you got flamboyant character of sexuality. They're saying you can't show a world where this is the normal, right? Where, you know, multiple partners is normal, you know, non-monogamous or gay or bisexual is normal and paint them as regular characters. No, you have to like beat people over the head with it and make sure that the character has a high pitched voice and a lisp. That's the only way you can get that point across period at the end. Well, a prime example is more recently when they introduced the, uh, the, the new trans characters into the last, uh, Oh God, that annoyed me so much. bro. Cause here's the thing is like, nobody had a problem with them doing that. The problem was when you have the character stop and say, you know what? I'd rather you refer to me as my pronouns. Like right. the reason fans had a problem with it wasn't the fact that you did that. It was in the sense of like, oh, we don't want anybody who's trans in our show. No, we know as fans that at this point, nobody gives a crap about that stuff. Yes. No we one cares it. about it. Yeah. In fact, if, if said person was born one sex, the technology is there to where if that's what they wanted to do, they would be able to switch it. And they would literally probably biologically be that. We are at that point technologically in Star Trek. Right. Yes. Like, <laughs> like, yes. In the future, if you want to be another gender, I'm pretty sure you can just press a couple buttons. Right? You don't even have to ask Bones. You don't even, you don't even <laughs> ask Bones. Just walk into a special booth. Here's here's the crazy part. Is, yeah, I remember that part when he, he turns around and she demands that he use her correct pronouns. I was like, that that didn't just happen, right? Like there wasn't. Did we just, we just saw someone a live tweet on an episode of of, of a Star Trek? Come on. Like yeah, it was really <laughs> out of the moment, and I mean, it just takes me back to that episode was abraham lincoln right <laughs> like on the original tos right. where you know he says oh my gosh you have a what a beautiful negress or whatever it is and she's like oh well he goes i'm sorry i didn't know if that would offend you and she's like oh we have no problems with terms like that it's just words you know and like that's kind of the whole point is by that point nobody everybody's beyond that shit. yeah they're beyond it this is yeah this it's is the future so beyond we have it's figured like, out we, we have somehow figured out how to actually make socialism work you think they're worried about pronouns oh no. for 400 <laughs> years they've been trying to work figure out how to make socialism work finally in 200 years according to star trek we figured out how to live in a in a society where your entire worth is based on your merit and not <laughs> your pay not your pay not your income and there's no money and everybody loves everybody and technology is working together and everyone's working together for the same goal you think they're worried about what he, she, they, them, Z, Z they're calling you? Nope. Nope. Not nope. I guarantee you that is not the problem. Because the reason why we can't make socialism, if you like socialism, great. The reason why we can't make socialism work, right? Because people are so stupid and greedy and selfish in, in our current turn in time that we would rather virtual signal and complain about some guy not using the correct pronouns than go to work and actually accomplish something. That's why we can't make socialism work, guys. Hey, once we get to Star Trek times where money doesn't exist and merit's all that matters and everyone's working toward the same goal, I guarantee you no one's complaining about pronouns. No, not in the least. Not in the least. Now, by the point we get in Star Trek, like racism's gone, politics are pretty much abolished as far as personal politics as humans, because we've beyond that. We're we're moving right. on to bigger, better things, or however you want to put it, like new frontiers, right? Like 
we're more strange worried about new can, worlds like yeah strange new worlds yeah. at that point like that's why kirk is more worried about can i uh sleep with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah kirk doesn't care about uh kirk is the least discriminating character <laughs> in star trek he's like wait a minute doesn't have a warm orifice if I put my penis in it, will it be offended? Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Would it be okay with me allowing to an, uh, sleep with it? Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and that, that's one thing I Riker would have been the same damn way, though. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Riker uh, was almost like dying to put his penis in anything. <laughs> dude. Right. Yeah. I remember right, when, that one episode where, he, uh, where he's hooking up with like the, the genderless or whatever person. Yeah. 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 Dude, you can almost see the get the giddiness on his face. It's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. New frontiers, you say. <laughs> right? In that in the Klingon episode, too, is almost like he's like trying to say, Oh, like, yeah, hey, smile on his face. He goes, okay, oh, right. <laughs> Let's get this on. Like, yeah, he's he's ready to try it with anything. Oh, that, <laughs> like, that, that one episode where Q makes the like the sexy Klingon chick, she's crawling to Worf, right? <laughs> I love how Worf's like, get away from me, woman. And Riker's like, wait a minute. <laughs> take a beat <laughs> exactly wait a second oh, and see, that's just normal right like nobody questions it nobody i no. mean like that's a, even even like Riker and uh what's her face's uh relationship was pretty fluid until they finally got hitched in the movie uh yeah people didn't have those kind of hang up hang-ups especially somebody like Riker, right. right like he was very confident in himself and he was more than willing to try anything once you know, like, yep. not twice. You yeah, know, so. I'm, I would be lying, and this is not a joke. You can take it as a joke if you like, but I would be lying if I didn't. If I if I said I didn't ask my wife at least once to go full green makeup in the bedroom. <laughs> oh shit! Could you wear the Wookie costume yes. tonight, honey? Please? At least just one. <laughs> She's a, usually, usually that kills the mood when I'm asking her to do like nerd stuff. She's like, oh god. No, well, there's a sensuousness in the painting part, see, because there's a whole fetish with that. Yeah, so you might have been able to work that one in. Here, there. the green chicks, man. Yeah. I think they do it for me, bro. Or and no, gorns, no. sexy gorn. Yeah. You you put you put tits on a gorn. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, no, I, I mean, look, I mean, we goof around and joke about it, and that's okay. But then that's the other one of the other problems I have with Star Trek, and here's where Lower Decks becomes one of the worst offenders, right? Like. Because I don't know what you think of Lower Decks, but I've only seen most of the first season and I just had to check out because to me it was, it wasn't just so much that it was offensive. It was because I'm not easily offended. Right. Right. But my whole thing is like, this is below Star Trek. Right. Like this is beneath it. This is not, it does not belong in Star Trek. You know, when you got to sit there and say the parody Orville is actually more true spirited to Star Trek than their own parody, then something is wrong. And the, fact is it's not even a parody because it's technically canon that's the other problem you have here it'd be a completely different story if you're like oh no this is not canon it's a complete parody what have you then i wouldn't have a problem with that but no they're presenting it as canon but still using that airplane style humor that right. does not work in doesn't star work. trek it doesn't work stop yeah now if you were to do something like orville i can understand that makes sense like if you had like you know the ragtag team of guys that are the last guys you call on, you know, that I can understand, you know, there are a couple of fuck ups and that's kind of what partially the show is, but it's adding that extra layer of the stupid, you know, yeah, kind see, of humor to it. The Orville yeah. could do whatever it wants too, because the yeah. Orville is starting fresh in a fresh new universe that they don't, they are not, they don't have the burden of having to uh, stick to a, I don't want to say theme, but like a style or a tone, right? right? No, I got you. Yeah. You know, but even then, somehow they still pull off a better Star Trek tone exactly. than current Star Trek. It's still grounded. It's still grounded right. in verisimilitude, as outrageous as some of the things get. And that's the thing, is that's where I think the people that made lower decks don't get it. It's like you can still do outrageous, funny things in the Star Trek universe. There's plenty of crap to mine through plenty yes and the way you're doing it is completely wrong right like a, a perfect scenario is okay you see, like you see that episode where they're all having orgies or whatever yeah no i didn't see it but i saw the photo i'm like i don't even oh, want to i don't God. want to know look and then and, and people were trying to justify it with like it's a holodeck or whatever or and stuff it's like no still it wouldn't it wouldn't even... work though because like 
Yeah. How can you pot? What, isn't that an extreme invasion of someone's personal rights to make put their likeness into a simulator and have sex with it? Holy well, shit. Well, the Orville already kind of handled this episode in better. Mm-hmm. Oh, with, with Primal Urges? Yeah, and actually even handled it as an as a real, a real topic. Yeah, it was like a, a porn addiction. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's, but you can still have fun with these. That was one of, of the funniest episodes right? with one of the like with such a realistic like moral. It was crazy. I actually right. have friends that are like, deeply addicted to porn. They, like, well, like, they, they can't even imagine, get to go to work. Right. Like, like, but you can can you imagine somebody like Picard or Kirk coming up against a, a new being like Yafit, but that doesn't talk right. Like, and having to deal with like that and the, the humor that you could come up with in certain things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, it, there's all kinds of things you can come up with and. The problem with that show is, is it had a decent setup, but they just didn't execute it. it it's you tried to go for this low level, like I don't even want to call it, uh, you know, Rick and Morty, because actually Rick and Morty has a little bit more going for it than this shit does. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, I, I, I've, uh, I have in the past compared it to like Rick and Morty, only because the animation style is similar, but the storytelling is way different. See, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Rick and Morty starts with an amazing story. This is very important. Yeah. Dan Harmon goes, I'm going to I'm gonna write an amazing story. And then around that story, we're going to work in jokes and cool animation. Right. And all that. The absurdity comes out of the, the, the moments. And that's what right. Star Trek should have taken advantage of, actually. Right? Because like, that's what they're supposed to be about. They're not the first people that meet. They're the guys that come in afterwards and... They dictate all the, the, you know, they figure out how to make things work with a new civilization. Well, there's all kinds of humor that can be mined from that. And they found ways to kind of go with it. But then other, other, and again, I haven't watched anything past the first few episodes of the first season, but then it just got to a point where it's like, you guys aren't even fucking trying. Right. Right. Like, it's just like this, when we could sit here and come up with 10 different funnier scenarios than what you guys are doing, then, then that's a problem. Yeah. We're, we're not even balling. Pe- yeah. yeah, you know, it's you know, even if you just think of an episode like with data, like you can come up with a hundred different funny things that data just couldn't grasp or get his head around, or there's a hundred different funny stories in the original TNG. So you know, much like he's trying, yeah, trying so much about data was already funny. Shit. What's yeah, that? like when he's just trying to learn to whistle, right? Or like, yeah, one of, the, my, my, one of my favorites is when he's trying to learn how to sneeze. It's like, why would you even need to learn how to sneeze, right. data? <laughs> right, yeah, I know, it's great. Yeah, D- data is like a there is so much you can get from data in, 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 in comedy when he has sex with Tasha Yar. Right. Right. It's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Or like um, when he, like the emotion chip, there's so much fun mm-hmm. shit you can have fun with there. That's already in your universe. Why add this extra layer of stuff? You didn't, I make? agree. And I know we've gone on about this a little too long, Yeah. But no, but it all boils down to who's controlling it. Who's behind the scenes. Who's behind this. And sadly behind most of our IPs are these people that put their agendas and their ideal idealistic bullshit first before the story, before the characters. And I sadly think we've gotten to a point where a lot of these writers, at least the best of them have been driven out of Hollywood because a lot of what are there in the industry anymore can't even write. Right. They don't even understand the fundamentals. Right. I mean, yeah, they are trying to all do something and subvert our expectations. It's like, no, you, you need to learn the fundamentals first, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, Thanks for watching. To see the full conversation, become a member of the podcast family. Use the link in the description below or go to our channel and click the join button. Select your tier and we'll see you at the next show.